to a well-designed business. My name is Luann Nigara, and I'm so glad you found this podcast. Together with my husband, Vince, and our partner, Bill, we have grown our company, Window Works, from the ground up. So I know and I understand the challenges you face in running your interior design business. I also know that your talent alone isn't enough to ensure your success. So on this podcast, we talk about strategies and practical steps to help you grow your business. But make no mistake about it, we have our share of fun here too, mixed in with those aha moments that I love so much. This isn't fluff. Nobody has time for that. Whether you are a new interior designer or a seasoned designer, I am here to help you create and to manage the kind of interior design firm that you dream of. It's straight talk and it's action. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hi, welcome to a well-designed business. On the show today, Laura Umansky, the principal of Laura You joins me. I interviewed Laura in the very first year of the podcast, and I can tell you that three plus years later, Kim at my office is still lobbying for Champagne Fridays ever since she heard Laura talk about her practice of celebrating wins with her team every Friday with champagne. So please go back and check out episode number 64 right after you listen to this one and you can hear Laura talk all about it. Laura Umansky is the founder and creative director of Laura U Interior Design based in Houston, Texas. Her work has been featured in its steam media outlets, including El Decor, House Beautiful, Modern Luxury Houston, Veranda, and Lux Interiors. And most recently, she is featured as one of the designers in the brand new Rizzoli book by Carl Delator. The book is called On Style, Inspiration and Advice from the New Generation of Interior Design. This was just released fall of 2019, so you can get a copy for yourself. Now, today, Laura and I talk about how she is guiding her company, how it takes leadership. It takes her leadership and you can hear it in it. Um, While they work toward their goal of growing from a $5 million firm to a $10 million firm, she explains how not only it takes the work of her internal team, but also as a leader of her company, she looks to outside experts and consultants. For her, that includes a CFO, an EOS consultant, and her personal business advisor who she meets with monthly. This is an outstanding conversation. You can hear how clear Laura is in her leadership and her vision for her firm. And I'm going to tell you, just as sure as you are about how when an expert interior designer designs a room, it turns out infinitely better, Laura knows that she must rely on expert business consultants to help her achieve her goals. This is a true hashtag smart lady and get ready to be impressed. All right. Now, Big thank yous to our sponsors, Article.com and My Doma Studio. You know Article has everything you need for your mid-century styled projects, especially if your client loves the clean lines of Scandinavian-inspired design. The To The Trade program is thoughtfully designed to support you with a special care to customer service, their fast delivery, easy returns, and of course, the beautiful quality furniture. All can be found at Article. So go to welldesigned.article.com today and sign up for your trade account and start placing your orders. Then, of course, we have MyDoma Studio. This is the single best platform for you to run your interior design business. You'll hear Laura talk about how critical it is to have a software platform for organizations for communication, and also that she personally has the ability to work with her clients and her team while she herself is remote, okay? My Doma Studio is designed and run by Sarah Daniele, who herself is an interior designer. She knows exactly what you need, and she has made sure that My Doma Studio is built to support your firm as you grow, and maybe one day to a $5 million company, just like Laura Yu. Try it for yourself. Go to mydomastudio.com com forward slash a well-designed business my doma studio.com forward slash a well-designed business all right let's talk with laura umansky hi laura thanks so much for coming back to a well-designed business 
Hi, Luann. Great to be here. Laura, I have to tell you, from the very first time when we met on the show, episode number 64, we were complete strangers. But I, within minutes, I remember thinking, oh, yes, you've got a real live one on the wire here. <laughs> yes, I think I think we're kindred spirits. So yes. it's easy. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, there's just some people that you just know, like I, I start to ask certain questions on the pre-air conversation and my brain goes, oh, yes, we're running a big girl business here. This is exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Big old business. Nice. Exactly. I hope so. Yeah. Well, and it's funny is, and I, it's, it's funny because I was thinking back, I didn't go back and listen to the interview again. Um, but I was thinking back there, I, what I know, and I remember that there was a moment that everything that I suspected about you was true. When I asked you to the effect of, you know, did you intend to have a business this size when you started out or did it just sort of organically happen? And you were like, oh, no, ma'am. No, I, I knew I was going to build a major business. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Um, I'm probably focused to a fault and I'm a major <laughs> planner. So yes, I, when I do 10 year plans, I'm, I'm all in. That's it. I, and that, you know what? That's very similar to the answer. You were like, I knew this and I wanted that and blah, blah, blah. Since then, we have met each other at several live events and I am so happy and grateful to know you. And each time I do have another conversation with you, I learn more and more about how uh, really smart you do run your business. And one of the things that we're going to talk about today is that you, you said a line to me when we were talking, you know, nothing happens by accident. And it reminded me of the thing that I often say is that you have to be prepared to be lucky. And they sort of speak to the same thing. Would you talk a little bit about that for you and what it's meant to you in planning and intending the business that you're running? Yeah, and I think it just depends on the the phase your business is in, is in. So for me, though, we we do a lot. So just to get one client, which we're actually evaluating right now, like what's our cost of acquisition, but we dig into our numbers and our metrics. Um, we plan every year. And I say we because I have a team. Um, but yes, we are extremely intentional and work begets work. So the more you do to plan, um, the more you're out there, the more you're throwing your yourself into your business and into your community and into the design industry, the more that's going to come back to you. I think that's just the gist of it. Right, right, right. And so tell me a little bit, we're going to talk um, a little bit about um, your, you, right now you are ready to scale again. You're ready to grow your firm to another level. And you were saying to me, that you feel like you get to a certain level and then you almost are like starting not over from scratch, but re revising the system, the foundation, the plan in order to support that growth. And window works is going through that right now as well. So tell us a little bit of what that means for you in this place in time. Yeah, that's, that's right. So I feel like every time I hit a, a big milestone and for us, it's a revenue milestone. So let's say at, your company at a million dollars is very different than your company at $3 million. And um, once we got to that level, we structured our leadership team. We really thought seriously and worked with consultants on how to structure our business um, so that we could scale. Because once you're scaling past $3 million, you're at $4 million, you're at $5 million, you can't be a one-person show anymore. You're definitely not you cannot be involved in everything. And I'm talking about me. So I like to, I'm a, I would say we're running this, this, um, business program called EOS. It's entrepreneurs operating system. Mm -hmm. And in that system, there's a visionary who has the big ideas, but then maybe doesn't want to be involved in the details and then gets bored and tinkers and messes things up. I'm a visionary. <laughs> I don't know who that would be. Oh, is it you right. too? Right. Yeah. I'm not like, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, I so know who that you're, is. <laughs> you are a visionary. Um, I get all these great ideas. Um, but when you're a company of whatever, 10, 15 people or more, um, and you have a lot of clients and revenue, you need somebody that is a counterbalance to your crazy. Right. So, and you need a team of people that can hold you back from making really crazy rash decisions that you want to make. So, um, we're very much set up that way. And we're to the point where I'm ready to grow the company, 
um, from where we are today, which is 14 people to adding new business lines, which means I need to even take another step back from the day to day work, work on the business instead of in the business as much. Because when I'm in the business, I'm just tinkering around and messing up our processes. Right, <laughs> so, right, right, right. Uh, it's really just setting that up to be able to function without me as much. Right. So I have so many questions in there. I'm going to go to the design related question first and then come back to the business questions. So I understand you're saying, you know, but you don't mean pulling back from the design process. You'll still be the point person for the client, even though you have Leticia, who I know is amazing and you have your different verticals under her. Or do you mean that? Do you mean you are stepping? I am not the point person. Um, No. And Leticia is not the the point person either. We are involved with every project, but the senior designer is on the point. Each project is the point of contact. Um, I'm the creative director and the president. So I get to see every single project. And just like with the business, I'm making big picture um, recommendations and design direction decisions and moving that project in the way that best represents our brand and our aesthetic, as well as the client's aesthetic. So I am still extremely involved. I mean, I had three creative meetings today with the team, Um, but that doesn't mean I can't step out of that role for a full week. Right. And everything falls apart. Right. Because it all keeps moving because you have that one moving along. And so we have touch points, but we're really able to do a better job for our clients. And then the team is so much better just with workload and um, being able to get their deliverables done on time without racing to the finish. So it's just, it's much more balanced, but we're getting to that point again, where we've experienced growth. So we're getting to that tipping point where another system needs to be tweaked and put in mm-hmm. place so that we can accommodate uh, maybe another business line. Right. And so, and I use the wrong language because I didn't have the word creative director in my head. And so when I oh. said point burst, yeah, no, I, I know from when we did the um, panel discussion in Surya that you do have that senior designer, you know, that is the person that, like you just said, is moving the yes. project along. You're going to go to New York for four days and it's not like who's picking the tile here. It's getting done. Right. right? And those drawings are not going to fall behind right. because someone else is completing them. Um, but if I need to make a decision, like we have all of these virtual tools in place right. that I can, they can reach me. But to, my, and we but can to my original question though, you're not, you, as you grow and as you, you know, add team members and as you, as you said, I st- taking another step back again, you're not taking the step back as the creative director. You will always be that person, at least for the I'm foreseeable sure, future. Actually. Or? No, I'm not sure that that's true. No. Um, we're going to have to see what this next iteration looks like, mm. but so you're open like, to one way or yeah, another. Yeah, and we talked about Leticia being our principal designer. She has as much experience as I do. Mm. Like she's brilliant designer and she works with the team and with clients directly as well. So I think it's maybe maybe there's more than one of me. Right. It's possible. It's possible. Well, you yep. know, Joni Vanderslice, she, you know, I, I'm going to speak from a three-year-old interview, but at three years ago, she had as a team at that point of 50 people total and several, I don't I think it was like 14 designers at that point running 14 different, you know, teams. Right. And she said at that point, she really doesn't know every single client and is not involved in every you single can't, project. Not right? at that stage. No. Yeah. yeah. It, it would be impossible and you would be a complete gap in the process. Because <laughs> yeah. You, you would, would be the one clogging it up all the time, right? Oh, for sure. It'd yeah. be terrible. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. So now go back to the EOS and the consultants that you use and the advisors that you use. Laura, was this something that from the beginning of your business, you intentionally utilize, whether it was EOS or something else, but always that outside coaching for lack of, or to use the, the the vernacular word of the day, always that outside consultant, or was it as you got to say 1 million in sales and you were growing to the five, like where, where what's your philosophy and on that? So I think I worked kind of in a little bubble and doing everything on my own and just learning by making mistakes, mm-hmm. learning what worked and what didn't <laughs> probably for my first 
oh, seven years. Um, I don't think I worked with any consultants. Uh, my husband is also an entrepreneur, so he's been a valued advisor. So mm. I guess I have an advisor just naturally in my home. Right. Um, so he's always been there. But I would say we I started working with a business coach probably four or five years ago. Okay. Um, and I revenue was probably about three million then. Okay. So, and now that we're growing again, um, I have a virtual CFO for our company. We have an in-house um, accounting manager, but we need that extra level of um, expertise. So we have a virtual CFO that works with us on a set number of hours, set, set contract every month. Um, and then I have a um, an advisor that I sit down with usually about once a month just to take a big look at the business, just top level um, he'll at, he'll answer any questions I may have or just hear me out and give me some guidance. And then we have our EOS implementer and she works with me not alone, but with our leadership team. Okay. And so the virtual CFO, are these, if we've got firms listening that are at your level, you're at five, maybe somebody's at three, they're at seven. Is this, you know, you know, 1-800-VIRTUAL-CFO? I mean, what the heck do you get? I wish it was that easy. That'd be amazing. No, um, I really tapped into my network um, and my husband's network and our other advisors' networks. Actually, the CFO that we ended up hiring, we interviewed a couple um, the one that we ended up working with came from our um, EOS implementer, okay. the one that works with me in the leadership team. She referred us to uh, an awesome guy that just our personalities meshed really well. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, he's and a valuable. Is leader. this the is this concept? This is this is new for me. Is this concept the same as except that the skill set and the deliverables are way more elevated? But is this like I've got an outside consultant as my bookkeeper, you know, he or she works for me 10 hours a month. And this is my virtual CFO that works 10 hours a month. And maybe yeah, he's a prob right? probably so. It, yeah, I think that would be the equivalent. So I mean, we he just could do be all, a CFO for books somebody else in -house. too, right? He could be, What's that? In other words, no, he's not doing your books. I get that. But in other words, this person, it's not his only job. He could be a virtual CFO Correct. for another $5 million company. It's like, this is his expertise and he puts it out there and this is what he performs for people. Just like a bookkeeper might do it for other you know, services, right? That's correct. Or it's just amazing. like your CPA yeah. focuses on your taxes, That's but he is a, a business person and he sees it not from a tax perspective, but right. from a business perspective. So he helps me look at my numbers, make sense of them, extrapolate so I can make business decisions and advise on those things. Right, right. And then you get the... What happens is because at this level, at 5 million scaling to 10, which is where you're going, which I know you're going to get there. And we're going to talk again when you're there. I'm 100% sure on, of it. Knock on wood, Luann. Let's hope. <laughs> oh, no. I, I'm not at all uh, concerned about you, Laura. <laughs> I'm not at all, right? So, but so the thing is, what we're saying is, you know, he's going to give you a certain look at this business. And then you're going to have a conversation with your CPA. And you're going to have a conversation probably with your husband still, too, right? But let's just see. Yep. You, and your EOS consultant. And, but it's like just gathering all the information, not just from the point of view from the CPA or just the point of view from your inside team. It's that. Correct. I yes. love that. Yeah. It's just a, a higher level of a advisory yes. services. And I'm not trying to complicate things, but we've gotten to the point where I can't look at the numbers as they are now and make decisions for the future. I right. need that that extra set of eyes and um, someone that can really give me real time feedback. Right, 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 right. Okay. And I would, I would imagine that it probably has come to be very much a, 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 where you would maybe push back sometimes and say, I don't know, do you think that? And why can't we this or just actually that brainstorming ability, like the way you meet with yes. the other consultant, right? And, these and I, are do that, outside I do that industry. a lot. I'm, yes. I'm constantly pushing back. <laughs> so I need somebody to tell me that is a stupid yes. thing to spend money on. <laughs> Like go, go to bed, sleep on that and then think about it again tomorrow because you're making a bad choice. Right, right. Well, don't you find that? I mean, I have, don't have that sort of level decisions on my head, but whatever I'm doing, it's, there's, it's a funny thing because I have my three, four people that I do the exact same thing and I've got them all in Voxer in a group Voxer and I'm like, okay. 
This is what's on my brain. This is what I think. But I'm asking for you guys to each chime in and say, dumbest idea you've ever had, or let's write that <laughs> <Brilliant>. one down. <laughs> Brilliant. Yes. Right? Exactly. Yeah. And that's what this that's what this group is. But um, I don't know what Boxer is. We don't use that program. Yeah, I'm Voxer, more of like V O X E R. Yeah, yeah. I don't think yeah, your CFO virtual is going to that. Look at that. I don't know Voxer. that one. <laughs> no. So Voxer is like a walkie-talkie system that I have with my, you know, five or six go-to people that I, it's I, you know, I don't oh, type. Oh, it's them. literally a walkie-talkie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Through your phone, it's like literally a walkie-talkie, and yeah, I can create groups of them and singles and blah blah blah. So wow. it it's great for informal communication is what it is it's it's not good if you i specifically have been great for barking orders at yes people. it's exactly great for that <laughs> <laughs> that sounds exciting yeah yeah it is it is good for that so um okay and so and then the other thing is this eos consultant so you i've had this keeps coming across my desk like so often in the last several months and i just was at the exciting windows uh conference in chicago in the beginning beginning of September and I had a long conversation with one of my colleagues there that is working with an EOS consultant and absolutely raving hmm. about it. And so yep. this is somebody that basically you get into a contract with and they work with you and they help you strategize and keep your team all humming and going. Well, it's a whole program. So EOS is, um, a, it's an entire system that you run your business on. Okay. So um, but the implementer sits down with, as an outside consultant, sits down with your leadership team and facilitates this program. Mm. And it's a lot about um, tenure planning and then backing that out to three years, to one year, to quarters. Mm. And so it's just keeping you all on task, making sure that everyone is accountable. And like our team is... Um, we function really well. We're all on the same page, but for teams that may be slightly dysfunctional or have like one person that's just sucking the life out of everyone else, <laughs> having that implementer there to yes. call them out and mm. to really raise those tough um, topics right. and make you talk about it, that is – that's gold. It is gold. It is gold because, and that was exactly what um, a, a different colleague that I've recently come across was going through and there in his particular organization. And he was just describing that, you know, there, look, we can all be the big bad wolf if we have to be, but there is a Ugh, different, who wants to do that? right? A number one, right? <laughs> you more, more flies with honey. Let's be serious. But, right. but there's also times that I, I don't know if you would find it to be true, Laura, but I would have to say truly, I know looking in the mirror and having worked with my husband and our cousin Bill side by side all these years and going from none of us, you know, three, four, five of us up to 21, back down to five, back up now to, 13 or 14, that there's not a chance I'm going to sit there and tell you that we have always managed every level and every change you know, well, mm -hmm. like perfectly. Like no, it, no. It's, it, it's impossible. It is. It just is. And you do your best. But when you do have those scenarios, it does get very hard because you sit there in your own brain as the owner and you're like, it's my way or the highway. And then you're like, well, but that's not <laughs> like inside voice, right? Growth, that doesn't work anymore. <laughs> that's right. It's like, it's like, well, you really can't go in and get agreement on that. You know, no. it's like, that's not going to work. And what happens, what I find, you tell me what you find is I find that as the owner, the longer you allow a situation to go on, whether it's an egregious one level or egregious nine level, the harder it is to rope it back in without those outside eyeballs and that outside consultancy. I agree. And this just, this keeps us consistent too. Mm. And it, it has given us a um, way to manage our entire organization so that everyone knows what to expect. Mm -hmm. So you said something a second ago that was like change management. And we're very into that this quarter, mm. um, just keeping everyone informed, um, kind of drip knowledge so that everyone can wrap their mind around big changes that are coming up. Um, and not necessarily big changes. If anybody from my studio is listening, like, it's cool, don't <laughs> worry. <laughs> um, but seriously, it's like, how do you run an organization with more than five people and keep everyone on the same page and accountable and 
not crying in the bathroom if something doesn't go their way. And um, yeah, and that means it's not my way or the highway anymore. It's what's best for the business. That's right. Because that doesn't work my way or the highway. I mean, it just doesn't. I joke about it, but it doesn't work. And I know it doesn't. (laughs) Yeah, it's what's best for the business. And we've learned to ask that question and to and to give and take making decisions based on what's best. Mm. And one of the things that I noticed that she said to me and you mentioned was those, those, the accountability, the, the goal setting all the way out to 10 years, but then breaking it down quarterly because Mm -hmm. that was what one of them shared with me. Yes. She said that, um, that, not only does it help because everybody knows what they're doing and everybody, if I understood correctly, everybody buys into what they will agree to be accountable for. And then you check in. There's no like, well, we said we were going to do this, but nobody did it. (laughs) No, it's you and everyone knows what you said you're going to do. So if you don't do it, then you are failing publicly. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that the one woman that I spoke with that's utilizing it, she said that was very powerful was, and this, the woman that I was spoken to, I had two different conversations. One was a gentleman with a big organization. One was a woman with a smaller organization, I think maybe four or five employees, right? And not doing anywhere near the revenue that you're talking about, but still, I think that's why I'm bringing it up is to v- the value of this system. It sounds like this EOS. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. One of the things that she explained that was very powerful was to find out how often on the quarter mark they were meeting goals that, you know, they were meeting 90%. And she said, you, yeah. you get to thinking that you're not making anything happen and you are right. Yeah. This, and this really celebrates that too. It calls it out every quarter. So you really see you're moving the needle every quarter yeah. and it's really, it's exciting. Um, it's also daunting though, because you're set, like you're resetting your goals every quarter yeah. and sometimes they are big goals. Yeah. So it can be scary, but yeah. for the most part, yeah, we're, we're about 90% or above yeah. on completion. Yeah. See, that's exciting. That's exciting. Okay. So, yeah. so the thing is that often when we, when I meet designers in live events, we, we have so much opportunity to talk about how do you get from zero to your first hundred K, but this is an opportunity for that, like your goal five to 10. And so what we're saying is the components are managed leadership, thoughtful, yep. intentional leadership. This isn't like, you know, I read a book once a week and then I try and get it done. <laughs> no, this is choosing the platform that you are going to run your business on, getting everyone rowing in the same direction and be consistent with that. So that's a problem like as the visionary in the company or as the creative director I used to have all these initiatives that would be different every month. I read a book and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is a great book. We're totally doing this. And then I lose interest after a month and I don't follow through just because I see a bright, shiny object. And I'm like, oh, I'm going after that. Um, This really, it really just gives you a system to follow and things move a little slower maybe than they used to um, with our initiatives, but they're also smarter. So, and they get done. It's like the they, tortoise and, and the they hare, get done, right? Like you can yeah. key. <laughs> getting things done is actually important. So, exactly. Yeah, we do. We we really do. We accomplish a lot. Um, and it's not just me, and it's not just the leadership team. It's everyone in the in the company. Now, Laura, when you say choosing the platform to run your business off of, you've made the choice to run it off the EOS system. Are there yeah. others out there that you investigated before selecting this one, or is that just a word phrase that you select? To, to describe that sentence. No, there are, there are some others that I've looked at that I know um, other companies run. There's one in particular that's coming to mind. It's called Great Game of Business. It's GGOB, mm-hmm. and that's open book management. So everyone in your company knows exactly what your revenues look like, exactly what your bottom line looks like, and what your goals are. And so that's very transparent and makes everyone accountable. Mm. Um, aside from those two, I don't think we looked at anything and okay. I actually feel like you could run those like EOS and great game of business concurrently, but we haven't done that. Okay. Okay. Cause I have not heard of any, any other, other than EOS. And so I wondered if there were options. Okay. All right. So, but the idea is that it's, it, it's, it sounds like at every level you 
you you have to you know i hear that you're the visionary i i would say i'm the same person and then like i think about michael gerber's the e-myth the, the manager the entrepreneur the technician right so he uses the word entrepreneur where we're using the word visionary with the mm-hmm. eos and then right what is the eos word for the manager the one that you know leads and gets it done you know that's the integrator integrator so, that's yes right. So there's the visionary and the integrator, and those are the two roles that are at the top of your mm-hmm. your company or your um, accountability chart. Is it Leticia would be your people. integrator? Or no, do you, no, no, I'm actually sitting, I'm doing both right you now. You have to so do I'm both. both. visionary and integrator. Yeah. Um, Leticia is our principal designer, so right. she runs that. that entire department. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um but she's a rock star. Yes, I and I've met her. She is outstanding, and you always yeah. talk so highly of her. Yes, integrate. So she's a designer. So she focuses on keeping that. our clients happy, keeping our teams head on straight, and making sure our projects look beautiful and are executed um, on our deadlines. The integrator sits more over the entire company and manages finance, manages marketing, manages des- the services portion, which is design. Um, so it's a big, it's a broader. Um, job mm-hmm. role it's mm-hmm. so it's more of like the ceo role right and so how so laura do you anticipate being able to be both people when you are at 10 million or is no, there a you know 1-800 integrator, integrator. No, <laughs> yeah. out of that integrator spot as soon as humanly possible <laughs> yeah so you will hire somebody to be that. we will we'll either hire from within if we can if there's someone that's a good fit or yes we'll go out and seek an integrator. So for right now, the um, one business consultant that I meet with once a month, I would call him kind of my interim integrator. So he does a lot of the things. He looks at a lot of the systems with me to do some of that work, but he's not in the day to day. And that's what the integrator's role is, is to um, be in the day to day, run all of those systems, like chief operating officer, uh, CEO, those kind of roles. Right, right, right. Well, and it's funny because I've often said how Vin and I are very quite naturally these two people. And, you know, I'm, I'm that, de- de- you know, when you, when I read these books, I had started to read the book Traction. Uh, ah, yeah. yes, it's so good. Yeah, Jillian LeRae, she recommended it to me and I started it. And as I was reading, I was just like, my goodness, this is like, you know, visionary, there's Luann's like, picture, me. integrator, there's Vinny's <laughs> picture. Like, yes. Well, you need to read one of their other books, Rock fuel. Oh, and she recommended chapter, that as well, right? Yes. The first chapter is on visionary and you're going to read the checklist. And you're going to be like, check, check, <laughs> check, <laughs> <Exactly>. check. <laughs> yep. And so when my husband was working with me, so he's a, a tech entrepreneur. So he had exited his last business. He sold it five years ago. He worked with me for three years. And so he was my integrator. Mm. Um, and then he just started a new company about whatever, three years ago. Um, and so I lost my integrator. Oh, see, uh, he was also my husband. Yeah, but it's funny because it works, you know, in your family too. You right? can basically run EOS with your family. <laughs> so I'm the visionary in the family, and he's my integrator there. Right, 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 right. That's so funny. So, but that's the thing. It's like you know, when you're at this level with this kind of um, staff and responsibility and goals, right on yep. the line, it seems logical that you will look to to hire an integrator. Like when I asked you, I expected you to say that, right? But yes. when you are maybe scaling from one to 3 million, you might have to be both the visionary and the integrator. There might not be the dollar that, bills, right? That's right. You're the entrepreneur. You're the business owner. Yes. yes. And that, I mean, I'm still sitting in both of those seats yes. and I'm and it's a it's a jump to hire that position. Basically, you're hiring a CEO that's going to make the decisions for your company. I would no longer be making those decisions on my own, that person could override me. That's crazy uh, to think about that. It is, but I, I welcome that because I'm I'm happy to be the idea person and I'm happy to champion those ideas. And if they're good, then they'll go through. Mm-hmm. And if they aren't in the best interest of the company, then that's the deal. Mm. I can't imagine the interviewing process for somebody that would, because I could just, I, I'm just visualizing thinking, well, you know, 
like with the podcast, right? So if I were to, because right now I'm I'm the integrator and the visionary for the podcast. I'm everything, yes. right? So <laughs> um, Vin is not involved in any of the decisions that happens other than I let him know what I'm doing and he just looks at me and rolls his eyes or he, you know, whatever. <laughs> He's just like, okay, whatever. Everything you do is working, I'm fine, right? Right. But it's growing and it's, I can see that it's, you know, becoming this thing that is forced to be reckoned with. And yep. I, I'm saying to myself, well, he's a perfect personality for an integrator, but I'm just going to say on air, I'm like, if he ever said no to something I wanted to do, I'd be like, I'm sorry, this is my baby. <laughs> and that's why it doesn't. And I was the same way when my husband was the integrator too. Yeah, well, okay. So it's I, not I, just I me. Roll him and he would be fearful and, you know, let me do whatever. And that's not a healthy relationship. <laughs> yeah. See, there's nothing not fearful. Vinny would not be fearful. We'd be fighting till dawn. <laughs> oh, no. oh no. Well, I mean, Michael would never be fearful. Right, right. Would just, he would give up because yeah. he knows that oh, I'm. Yeah. I'm like, I would never stop. Yeah, 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 yeah. Vin would be like, okay, seriously, you <laughs> yeah, asked me it. this what? because this is not your superpower, and now you're going to sit here and debate with me. This, there's nothing more <laughs> dumb than this, Luann. And I'd be like, right. yeah, but. <laughs> yeah, so I think probably an outside integrator yeah. in that case. Interesting. Or at least someone that's not your husband, yeah. So so talk to us that 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 one to five million where you have to be your own visionary and integrator. How do you manage that, Laura? Give some tips to some designer colleagues out there that are, because we can understand if we're at five million like you when we're growing, we're going to interview and hire. We know that. But it's that in-between period. Do you... Do you wear a visionary hat on Monday and integrator hat on Tuesday? No. I mean, you can't, right? So, it's just all meshed together. Yeah. Um, and you you do what you can. Mm -hmm. I think, I mean, when I started my company, it was just me. Mm -hmm. So I did every single thing, which I think is really valuable because you know what your team has to do because you've done it. Mm -hmm. um, so you can ask them to do those things. But yeah, you just do it all. It I mean, is. obviously, uh, once you get to a million dollars, you probably have someone that's helping you with the books because right. you don't have time to do that anymore. Yeah. And I feel like it was also just a very natural and organic growth. Um, but just like you, like we hit a ceiling where our team was 18 people and we scaled back to 14. Yeah. And that was really hard. Um, but that's the right number for where we were because we weren't set up. We didn't have that foundation to run an 18 person company. We weren't, we couldn't do it. So, mm -hmm. um, that was probably seven years ago. So now we have 14, we're growing in a smart way where we're planning. I'm not just coming in and making rash decisions mm -hmm. now. Um, but growing from a million to 5 million, I don't even remember yesterday. So it's really hard for yes. me to, to talk through every step of that. Yes. Um, but I would just say you you hire as you can. You're working with consultants until you have that full time person or until you have the need for that full time person. Mm -hmm. um, I'd say definitely leverage people that are part time or consultants until you feel like it's necessary to bring someone in full time. Right, 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 right. And the thing about it is, is, is to it always comes back to the foundation that we've we've set for our business, the systems, right? Because you can't scale whether you want to scale from, you know. 50,000 to 100 or from 1 million to 3, you can't scale if you don't have the finite duplicatable system, right? Correct. Yes. And we're very process driven here um, in every department. So marketing has a process and it's documented and everyone's aware of it. Mm -hmm. Design absolutely has a process. Our clients are, that's how I do biz dev is I let them know what that process is. So not only is our design team running that process, our clients are educated on it as well. So they know what to expect. Mm -hmm. um, um, and then finance depends on that process because that is directly tied to our cash flow. So, mm -hmm. yes, we have duplicatable processes within every department and it just functions as a whole. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And what I've learned and I like to make sure I always caution colleagues and, and business owners is that with each level you get to, when you grow to the next one, it stresses the processes you have and the yep. ones that are good will will stay good um they may need to be tweaked though for growth but the ones that are not good they're gonna bust up and you can't ignore it you gotta like revise right that's at, that's so true yes and so we've just refined our systems over time mm -hmm. and we're refining them now like we are big believers in change and growth 
Um, and so there is no status quo. Like it's always going to get better. We're going to get more efficient. We're going to get more innovative. Our processes are going to follow that. So there's not ever a day you're going to come in here and it was just like the same day last year. Like right. we're always learning and growing. Mm -hmm. That's part of our core values is we have like a learning, like lifelong learners and a growth mindset. Mm, I love it. I love it. That's great. Yeah. We're going through that with at, at window works. Now we've going so much growth in the last two years that Vin and Bill and I have just been meeting over the last couple of months. And we're like, Okay, we have awesome systems for two million in revenue. The systems for four million need to be tweaked here. Yeah, you can't here. just double what you have. Like that's not how that works. No, so it, no, it scales differently. You should look into EOS seriously. I know I sound like a cult leader, but I promise you, they're not paying me. I just <laughs> love the system, and it's worked. We've increased our revenues thirty three percent this year. Whoa, that's awesome! From running that system for one year. Well, you know what happens for me is when I it crosses my plate one time, then it crosses a second. Now this is the fourth time in about three months that this has been crossing my plate. So to me, that's the universe saying, Luann, <laughs> you Just need take to a, look take at a this. Look. <laughs> exactly. Just take a look. Exactly. Um, and it may not work for you. You could look at Great Game of Business too, because uh, my father-in-law, his company runs that system mm. and they've had a lot of success from that. Okay. Okay. So I love these tips and these advice because we give tons of ideas and advice for baby, my, my, my baby designers, but we don't often have the opportunity to have the conversations for the designers like yourself that are already well, well established and, but still reaching and growing and part and of learning that, every yeah, day and learning. Right. <laughs> and, and I was just going to say, and part of that is the brand new book that you're part of. I mean, tell yes. us about this, Laura. Oh my gosh, I'm really excited. Um, so Carl Delator just came out with a new book for Rizzoli and it is called On Style and it is uh, the top 50 new, although I'm not super new, but um, up and coming and new designers in the U.S. So um, yeah, it's a really cool book. I just got, it was released yesterday and I just got my hands on it yesterday because my loving husband went and picked up a copy. Aww. Uh, yeah. And it's a really, it's a beautiful book and he did a great job and I feel like I'm in, I'm honored. Like it, it's really good company. Um, the rest of the designers in the book are fantastic. So oh, it's that's very awesome. cool. That's awesome. I can't wait to see it. And then by the time the yes. show airs, the book will be out and we probably will have seen it at High Point and everything else. Well, we're doing but... a book signing at High Point. Oh, good. Um, okay. With uh, with Rizzoli, so and with Monogram appliances as well, so that that should be on High Point's um, events calendar. Okay, great. So we will have been to High Point by the time this airs, but I'm sure, oh. we, yeah, but yeah. I'm sure we'll all have seen it and been there, and it'll be amazing. And of course, yes, we will, will have done I our will panel have discussion by then too. Point. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like a like a funny universe. The podcast we have conversations that like the rest of the world doesn't hear for three months, but. <laughs> I know, I know. Oh my goodness. So I'm so happy for you, Laura. I really, really am. Yeah, it's exciting. Yes, it is exciting. And the thing it's is- It's very cool. And it's my own home in the book too. So it's ah. really, a, it's personal. So it's, nice. it's cool. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. I'm just happy for you in general because you work very hard. And sometimes oh, we could look outside looking in and think, ah, oh, you know, has everything so easy, but it really is the conversations like this that I've had with you over the years that I know how thoughtful you are about running the business. And that's what it takes. It's not it's just a lot luck. of work. Yeah. It's a lot of work, but it's not just banging your head against the wall and putting in the hours. It's just right. being proactive and um, intentional about it. Yeah. Working smart is the thing, right? Working smart. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. And I think, you know, the last and final thing about it is that I, I have so many conversations with newer entrepreneurs, newer designers, and they are understandably hungry and looking for information. But I feel mm -hmm. like sometimes I feel like they sometimes think there's going to be a light bulb moment and then it's all going to be clear. And it really is just <laughs> always a process. You're always getting it another is. moment, right? And getting another, like another pivot. It might not be a big pivot, but you know, this little training thing didn't work or this little process didn't work. It's like, it is always just head down and working, right? 
Yeah, I think so. Unfortunately, there's no one roadmap for your design firm because every firm is so different. Mm -hmm. Um, But there, yeah, it's just putting, it's putting the work in, tweaking your processes. And like you said, little tweaks, it doesn't have to be a complete overhaul every time. Learning what works for you, what works for your clients, what works for your team. Um, And just over time, just making those changes Mm -hmm. and really focusing on what works. Mm. And how about this? And not ignoring what's not working, right? Totally. Get rid of it. Yeah. That's the hard, that's hard part. That's a hard part because if it's a big thing, it's a little thing. Sometimes when it's it's hard to get rid of it, it is. If it's a little thing, you think, oh, why rock the boat? If it's a big thing, you're like, oh my goodness, this is going to rock the boat. (laughs) I am actually, I'm, I'm still guilty of that because um, we use some software that I won't name that we definitely need to change from because it does not work for every department. Mm. And it is such an integral part of what we do in the design team that we are all hesitant to change it. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's, those are the things that you face as you grow. Something that comes up in our next quarterly planning Mm. session. Right, right, right. Those painful decisions. Yeah. Well, I sh- I'll tell you what, at Windowworks, at the time that we're recording this, we just switched to a completely different CRM uh, system. And at mm-hmm. this point, we are on it, I think, less than eight days. And we're like, rip the Band-Aid, buy a new one. We're like, that's it. It's yeah. Really? Yes, because it's just so bad and and this one we didn't buy it comes with the with our major vendor okay Okay. and so the thing was it was supposed to be this amazing wonderful thing and it's very difficult very tedious and the the alternate Mm. is is quite a bit of money five figures you know what i mean and um yeah you know over a 10-year period right like we're looking at yeah but it's your crm that's that's really for your business that's really important that's right and that's what vin and i and billy just had a meeting last week and we're like okay five figures over 10 years versus free okay five right. figures over everybody complaining every day five figures over i can't make an appointment in this thing <laughs> oh yeah i know and we're just well like, we've been on this it. system for probably eight years mm. so we should have changed a long time ago mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah and yeah so i'm guilty it's not easy it's not easy some t- some things you know you you do f- quicker and easier than others like this one. I said, we're, it's a week and we're just like, Mm-mm. I said, what are we going to do? We're going to like <laughs> complain for six months. Just let's go. Let's rip the bag. We are going to pony up the cash <laughs> and make this happen. Exactly. Oh <laughs> my goodness. Well, you know, congratulations on the book. I can't wait to see Thank eyeballs you. on it when we get to high point. Yes. And um, I just am so grateful to know you, Laura. And of course you're going to have to come oh, back in another you. year and tell us when you hit the next milestone and what your next group of, uh, you know, goals are. Okay. <laughs> Oh, I will. And everyone here is holding me accountable. So I have a pretty a big year plan next year. So let's see. That's awesome. We'll That's see awesome. what happens. Oh, I'm not, I told you in the beginning, I'm not at all. I don't have a doubt at all. You're going to get it done. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. I'll call you when I'm having my sleepless nights. That's it. <laughs> I, I have a, a virtual red wine with you across the, the, the phone line. All right, Lord. Thanks so much. Thank you, Luann. Big takeaway here, right? To grow, to be profitable, to have a well-run business, what do you need? You need outside eyeballs on your business. That's what you need. Even though that this show is airing in December 2019, I actually interviewed Laura at the end of last summer. And if you heard the podcast just last week, Power Talk Friday, number 491, you learned that I introduced several ways that I've come up with to help you improve your business and your business acumen in 2020. And in that episode, I told you I had been thinking about this, how to help each of you, where you are exactly in your journey as an entrepreneur. And this idea sort of started growing in part from this conversation that I had with Laura. You'll hear, as Laura said, the things that she did to grow her company from 1 million to 3 million were very different than the things that she needs to do to grow her company from 5 million to 10 million. But the message is the same. She said to hire the consultants you need until you can and you might ultimately need them on your team full time, but to not overlook it before you can and need them full time. Okay. In her case, she needs a CFO. If you are new in business, you might actually just need your first bookkeeper. 
but don't resist it. Okay. Or maybe you are ready to grow from 250,000 to 500,000 or from 1.5 to 2 million. And thinking about how we did this at Windowworks, I realized that it's very difficult to do if you don't have a person you can talk to. Like Laura now hires that person every single month, her, admi- her advisor. So what do you do? And that's what got me thinking. And that's how come I came up with hire Luann as your chairman of the board. All right. So if you missed that number 491, go back and check it out. I have five five very specific resources for you to access so that you can grow your business in 2020. All right. And I want to say, you know, it's so crazy. As I was listening to this interview in editing, I like I did a total head smack because Here I am talking to her about, you know, where do you find a CFO, 1-800-CFO, forgetting all about our very own Kimberly Merlitti. Episodes number 361 and 432, Kimberly Merlitti from KMM Consulting is available for you to hire as your CFO. She specializes in interior design businesses. So check her shows out. Um, As I said, number 361 and 432, if you think that you need this service, maybe Kim is a right fit for you. All right. Another thing too, I want to say... There's an upcoming episode with Barclay Butera that you haven't heard yet. It'll come out in January. And again, in editing the show and interesting, having just had the conversation with Barclay a week or so ago, he a couple of times referred to, well, the president of my company, he this, the president of my company, he that. And this is that growth, right? This is, he's even further ahead than Laura. I don't know how many millions his company is worth, but I would hazard a guess. He might even, you know, he's probably 10 plus, maybe 20 plus. I have no idea. We didn't ask him that. I usually do ask people, but I didn't ask Mark. Like, um, but the thing about it is, is, It's like what Laura was talking about, hiring that integrator someday and, you know, hiring a CEO. And you can hear in Barclay's conversation coming up in January that he just matter-of-factly mentions, you know, my president this, my president that. So this is how a company grows. You know, you're always taking stock, always looking, and always thinking what's over the next hurdle. But the idea is to gather your people, okay? And this also ties into an update on window work. Because again, as I said, we, you know, we interviewed this show several months ago. You all know my, my cousin, Eileen Hahn. She was a co-author in my book, A Well-Designed Business, The Power Talk Friday Experts. Eileen is an organizational co- uh, consultant and her client roster includes the Texas Rangers, the San Diego Padres, Legoland, Anheuser-Busch, you know, and she doesn't typically work with companies the size of Window Works, but she is working with us because she's worked with us in an informal way for all of my business life. It's been one of these people that I've been able to reach out to, right? And so, but after my conversation with Laura, I called Eileen and I said, we need this. We need this big picture view. We need help as the three owners of our company to restructure it so that we can manage our growth because it is a different thing, okay? So Eileen is leading us through her process, which is similar to the EOS system. And this year in 2019, we'll hit the $3 million mark and we've got our sights on $4 million for next year. So, but it takes that outside look, those outside eyeballs, okay? So together with Eileen's help and our entire team, we are setting out the game plan to achieve this, all right? So what is your game plan for 2020? What goal do you have? I honestly don't care if your goal is to go from 50,000 to 100,000. It's as important and as relevant for you to have outside eyeballs, okay? Just if as if if your goal is from 2 to 3, 3 to 4, 200 to 300, it doesn't matter. Every stage. And that's the funny thing because I can look back on our career in window works and really, really um, think about our growth and what it took at each stage. And that was what I was saying to you in last week's show. It's like, well, what did we need when we were at this point to this point? And what did we need when we were at this point to this point? And that's why I think that the um, five things that we've come up with that we're launching in the first quarter of 20. 2020 really address a lot of 
all those stages. So hopefully you find yourself in one of those places where one of these is an answer for you, okay? Because I don't want you to do it alone, all right? And and actually, more to the point, it's very inefficient to do it alone. Why should you reinvent the wheel when somebody else has already rolled it down the street, right? Okay? So there are options for you at every level. The sooner you understand that help and guidance is very important to running an efficient business, a business, the, you know, sooner you'll reach your goals. All right. So decide what and how you will invest in yourself and your business in 2020. If you have any questions, you know, you can always email me at info at com and say, I don't know what I need. Help me. (laughs) And then I'll have a conversation and I'll help you. I really will take, you know, 20 minutes or a half hour and figure out, help you figure out where you are, what you need and point you in the right direction, whether that's with me or somebody else in my big community here of people that have been in the book or in the the next book coming out. Um, But, you know, one way or another, we'll get you some help, okay? But you got to ask for it. Just let me know. I'm here to help you. Decide to be excellent. Thank you so much for joining me again today. This podcast is a production of Window Works, your resource for custom window treatments and awnings. To learn how we can help you on your next interior design project, go to www.windowworks-nj.com. And if you're interested in working with me on your business, either through masterminds or one-on-one coaching, or you want to know how to get my book, The Making of a Well-Designed Business, or you just want to know what's going on in the podcast land, and where I'm going to be. All of that is found at luannnigara.com. Thank you so much. Have an excellent day.